Is everybody ready? We got a, enough to start, don't we? <clears throat> You're in charge, Mr. Chairman. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and we'll uh, call, call the meeting to order. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody here today for our uh, first meeting of our Motor Vehicles Committee. Uh, we're going to adopt our, our rules, and uh, we got a presentation from the Commissioner of uh, the Department of Revenue. She's going to make up on our drive system, give us an update on, on that, uh, and then we're going to uh, talk about our subcommittees and uh, at, at this time, though, I would like to ask Representative Perkle if he'll uh, open us with prayer. Well, to you, Henry Fowler, I thank you for this day and for your blessings for the members present, uh, for those that will speak, uh, for those that are listening. Lord, I pray that you'll give us wisdom as we deal with, uh, with this committee uh, for the good folks of the state of Georgia. Amen. Thank you. At, at this time, I, I would ask that the... Uh, representatives that are here would introduce themselves and tell what district they're from and uh, how many years they, they, they've been in the legislature and, and how many years they've been on this committee. Uh, let's start, start to my left with Representative McLean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, turn it on. What number? Uh, the one that's blinking. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is my uh, sixth year. I represent House District 100, uh, which is Gwinnett County. Uh, that's the city of Lawrenceville, uh, Norcross, Duluth, and uh, Lilburn. Uh, and I've been on this committee uh, four years. Good afternoon. Uh, Kimberly Alexander, and I represent District 66, and I've been here for, this is my eighth term. I believe I've been on the committee ever since. <laughs> Thank you. And, and I'm going to ask uh, our, our uh, analyst if she would introduce herself as well. My name's Molly Aziz, and this is my first year as an analyst for this committee as well. So, right. hello. Do, doing a great job. <laughs> Keep, keeping it straight. <laughs> Me too. Uh, I, I'm John Corbett. I uh, chair in this committee uh, this year. That's my fifth year in the legislature, starting my third term. Uh, First, first year on this committee. Excited to be here. Looking, looking forward to, uh, to uh, working with everybody on the committee. Uh, Jason Ridley, I represent District Six up in uh, about as far as north as you can get without going into Tennessee. Um, this, I've been here uh, one session, two years. Been on this uh, committee for those two years also. Jeff Jones, District 167, Southeast Georgia, Glenn McIntosh and Long. This is the uh, start of my third term and my second term on this committee. And uh, glad to be Vice Chair, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. My name's Alan Powell. I'm from uh, Hartwell, Georgia, up on the shores of beautiful Lake Hartwell. I represent Hart, Franklin, Madison counties. This is my 15th term and my 29th year on the Motor Vehicle Committee. Uh, don't hold your breath out right there. I've been on several chairmanships in my tenure, and uh, and as always, look forward to this committee because they used to tell me Bill Morey would commit suicide if they took me off of motor vehicles <laughs> back years ago. And uh, but look forward to working with the committee members and uh, some of the new ones. If there's anything that I can uh, help you with on the historical perspective of why things are done and why not, then I'll be glad to work with you. Uh, I'm Clay Perkle. I represent Turner, Tift, uh, Irwin, Ben Hill, Coffee Counties uh, in South Georgia. I've uh, been uh, in the legislature four years, each of those on this committee. Timothy Barr, uh, this is going to my seventh year, and I have served all those years on this committee and look forward to continuing, sir. I have Gwinnett and Hall County. Henry. Uh, Dale Rutledge, uh, represent District 109, Henry County, Rockdale, and Newton County. Um, this is uh, my seventh year in the legislature and first day on this committee. Glad to be here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bob Trammell uh, from the big town of Luthersville, represent Meriwether, Caida, Troop Counties. Uh, it's my fifth year in the General Assembly and my third year on this committee. 
Congrats. Uh, House District 127 represents parts of Augusta, or Richmond County, as well as Jefferson County. Uh, this is my sixth year in the uh, General Assembly and my fifth year on this committee. Hey, folks. Uh, Mark Montan, House District 17, first year in the legislature, and the uh, first year here. First week here. Well, all right, thank you. Uh, our first item, we're going to uh, adopt our rules for the committee. Everybody should have received an email and a copy uh, to their office. I hope you had a chance to look over the, the rules. Uh, if there are any, any questions on, on the rules. Uh, and if there are no questions, I've, at the proper time, uh, we, we'll entertain a motion. We have a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. We have uh, adopted our rules. The, the, the next item uh, that, I, that I want to uh, go over that's on our agenda, I'm going to skip over a little bit, but on the very back of your, on your rules, it's got a, a, a list of the two subcommittees that are in our rules. We've got a tags and titles and a uh, driver safety and service uh, subcommittee. Uh, we've, everybody will be on one committee. Uh, uh, we've appointed the uh, chairs and uh, vice chairs of those committees. Uh, driver safety and service, Clay Perkle will chair that committee, and Timmy Barr will be the vice chair. And then tags and titles, uh, Jason Ridley will chair that committee, and Jeff Jones will be the vice chair of, of, of that committee. Uh, at this time, uh, we, we're proud to have our Commissioner of Revenue with us and would ask her to come up and give us an update on the uh, drive systems and where we are and look forward to hearing what she has to say. Well, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, I'm delighted to be here and speaking with you today is I think we might have figured it out. There we go. <laughs> Thank you for your indulgence and my apologies. Again, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. It's an honor to be here today to give you an update on our flagship project for 2019, our drive system. And I'd like to start off by acknowledging uh, the Department of Driver Services Commissioner, Spencer Moore, who is here in the audience today. and. Uh, publicly acknowledge, as I do every chance I have the opportunity to, uh, his excellent partnership on this project. Uh, as many of you know, this is a joint collaborative between the Department of Driver Services and the Department of Revenue to modernize our uh, shared platform to be able to provide better services for the Department of Motor Vehicles, tag and titling functions, and the Department of Driver Services, driver's licensing functions. Uh, we will uh, proceed through quickly the, the highlights of the PowerPoint because I know you can all read the details uh, at your leisure. We are on our way to the launch of phase one, the Department of Revenue's Department of Motor Vehicles uh, component of our drive system. And we will be uh, following immediately after that 19 month period that we will be completing on May 27th. Uh, with the Department of Driver Services rolling out the um, customization and uh, preparations for implementation of their functionality of the final drives product. They will be rolling out live on January 2021. Uh, I don't know if uh, the Commissioner Moore is going to be able to stay very long, but I know that he will make his folks available at any time should there be any questions as phase two rolls out but we'll focus today just on phase one. Uh, both Commissioner Moore and I have been actively communicating to our constituencies 
on the modernization of this technology and we will continue to do so so that there's a familiarity by those users, uh, be they individual uh, motorists, driver's license holders, or those partners that we share at the local county tag offices. But we will continue all of the outreach uh, aggressively as we move into launching both phases going forward. The need. Uh, I think it goes without saying for those that have been on the committee for uh, some time that we've been talking about this project for years. And in 2015, we made the conscious decision in conjunction with uh, the department, uh, the governor's office of budget and planning and with uh, great assistance by the Georgia Technology Authority to uh, develop this system on a common platform that would save our taxpayers money and provide some functionality between the two agencies to, again, improve our customer service delivery. Uh, the system that we're currently operating on is 20 years old. It's uh, on an old mainframe system, which is cumbersome, difficult to program, and we are very much looking forward to bringing our technology into the 21st century, which is much more web-based, uh, intuitive and user-friendly. Objectives uh, I, I pretty much go without saying that we want to provide better service to the citizens of the state of Georgia, so we're looking for better functionality, better modes of delivery. Uh, the Department of Revenue will have some new venues which to provide these uh, services to our motorists via kiosk, web-based, mobile applications, and we want to be able to better use the technology and the data that we will be accumulating with our service delivery on titling and tag registrations and renewals. Of course, uh, user faces, user interfaces that are intuitive, as I mentioned before, but also be able to utilize data analytics to uh, improve our technology as we continue to offer these services. And the system is um, sophisticated enough to be able to provide us with that functionality. I want to stop for a minute and acknowledge uh, the, some of the key players that have joined me today uh, that have uh, been on this road with us uh, that work for the Department of Motor Vehicles at Department of Revenue and the fact that they uh, are probably much more conversant in all of the details of this project. And so they've joined me here today in case there's questions that I won't be able to um, provide substantive answers to, but I'll first introduce our Director of Motor Vehicles, Ms. Georgia Steele. She's here on the front row. Uh, she really is the lead for the agency on this project. Um, her knowledge, expertise, and, and management of the Department of Motor Vehicles makes her a key component of a successful uh, implementation of our drive system. So we're glad to have Georgia here with, her, with us today. Next to her, Janie Brodnax, who has been with the agency for quite some time and is very subject matter expert w of the gratis system, and that knowledge is helping us um, customize our new drive system so that the services that have been provided over time will be consistent for uh, new delivery and that our partners at the local county tag offices, uh, we have someone that can assist them in making sure that they can operate from their side of the project. Next to her is Brent Bennett, uh, also at the Department of uh, Motor Vehicles, and Brett came to us from local government, so he brings that local government tag office expertise and experience to help us with our implementation of this project. And next to Brent is our vendor lead. Uh, Mr. Kevin Stump is the project lead for Fast Enterprises. That was the vendor that was chosen to uh, implement this project for both uh, motor vehicles and driver services. Fast Enterprises uh, sold to the state a off-the-shelf product that is now just being customized uh, for all of those intricate uses that are specific to the state of Georgia. And Kevin's been wonderful. He's actually been instrumental in implementing these, this system in other states. So he comes to us with uh, experience on uh, modernizing and utilizing this software platform. Uh, we are following the components of the General Assembly's House Bill 676 in uh, providing change management and uh, making sure that we are following all the tenets of change management, uh, working in partnership with our county tag offices and all the other uh, members and stakeholders 
in this project. And there are many stakeholders, as I'm sure you're aware. Uh, not only are we directly connected with the drive system, with all the county tax commissioners and the tag offices across the state, but our system is used uh, on a daily basis by law enforcement to do system queries of registration and titling of motor vehicles that are operating on the roads of the state of Georgia. So the uh, functionality is also critical for them to be able to continue to perform their public safety services. We also have over 500 business partners, automobile dealers, uh, their members of their association are here today as well. Uh, we interact with lending institutions. Uh, we have to provide insurance verification uh, functionality uh, as a requirement of the Department of Motor Vehicles to ensure that uh, all vehicles registered in the state have the minimum essential uh, insurance coverage to operate. And of course, the general public. Uh, we renew registrations for over 10 million vehicles each year and issue over 2 million new titles when a uh, oh, change of ownership occurs, whether it's a new or a used vehicle. Uh, right now, there's over 7 million valid drivers holding driver's licenses in the state of Georgia, and phase two will be assisting them. So you can see that this is a very important and very will be heavily utilized system. Our, our primary focus right now is making sure that our county tag offices are fully resourced and ready to rock. Uh, we are, at this point, uh, making sure that they have the technology available. Uh, a, a slide or two after this will indicate where we are on that county readiness as far as technology. Our next focus from today through launch day in May is training. We are uh, s recruiting on a daily basis county staff to uh, work with us to learn the system, to test the system, to help us customize for the specific services that they find most critical for their service delivery. So we have been doing that for quite some time, but uh, our real push for these last 112 days is going to be making sure that our county partners are fully ready to go. So we're, we're looking for assistance, and we'd be grateful for the uh, communications that you and, and your colleagues in the General Assembly can convey to your local governments. It's critical that we have that uh, cooperation and uh, devotion of time and resources from the county tag offices so that we can provide them with the resources and the training that they need to make sure that they can deliver from day one the level of service that their customers, their taxpayers, and their citizens are expecting will expect from this system. We know the system will deliver, we just want to make sure that the users of the system are ready to go as well. So we had a deadline for getting equipment in place and we, as you can see from the map, that there are still some counties that we haven't completed. Uh, we have a, a game plan and we are pursuing it. We are confident that all of the counties in the state of Georgia will have all of the technology, all of the connectivity ready for go live day in May that we just wanted to offer you today a status update. And of course, as you can see, that was January 18th. That's already changed dramatically uh, as our partners that are overseen by the Georgia Technology Authority are going out to each county and establishing that circuitry and connectivity so that they have the functionality of this new system. Uh, our staffs are also making site visits to every TAG office across the state to make sure that they have the technology, the, the computers, and that uh, functionality in place now so that they can begin their testing. Uh, it's kind of a busy slide, but th this is the road that we have been taking since we began the project quick kickoff in November 2017, uh, going through all of these different steps. Uh, we're still in the uh, area where of training and testing uh, with our go live date of May 27th of 2019. Uh, there is nothing at this moment that indicates that the, there's going to be any problem with our go live date of May 27th and we are doing all of the critical functions to get us there on time. It's 112 days and that's 112 calendar days. There are significantly less business days until this launches. But again, we are uh, pursuing all of the uh, tasks and chores on a time schedule that we had put in place some time ago to ensure that our county partners would have the functionality and the training opportunities that they need to be ready for us to go on May 27th. Um, as I said, was something that you can convey to your county governments is uh, 
getting them to volunteer their county tag office personnel to spend the time on training. And uh, I'll get a little further into that in a minute. Uh, one of the key training goals is uh, uh, the ability to actually access the live system on go live date. Uh, we have three levels of training that is required by each of the county tag office staff that will be working in the drive system and they need to successfully complete all three levels of training in order to be certified to have access to the live system on May 27th. So right now we are sending teams out to each site at the counties to assess their readiness and make sure that we provide what they need well in advance of May 27th. Uh, we're teaching them how to train themselves and also take the training courses and we are using a sandbox environment where it is uh, a, not a live production environment but a place where they can familiarize themselves, uh, get used to all the functionality and then be able to ask questions on whatever uh, key tasks that they do on a day-to-day -day basis so that they feel proficient on May 27th. Uh, we're also providing instructions on how they implement the system, uh, the drives installer, so that they can upload the technology on the hardware that they have acquired. And we're putting uh, training postings available to all of the counties to make sure that they have full access to every bit of training that is going to be required. That's it in a nutshell. Uh, I think the, the most important message I want to leave with you is that we are grateful for the investment that the state has provided uh, in this new functionality. We're confident that it's going to be light years better than the systems that they're currently working on. And they, we, we feel that our citizens are going to be grateful for the uh, advance in technology that's going to provide this functionality. And we are dedicated to a go live on May 27th that uh, will satisfy every one of those millions of users that we will be interacting with over that following 12 months. And Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to take questions on this or any other subject okay. as time permits. We've, we've got a couple questions. Uh, I'm going to introduce uh, Representative Prince. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Commissioner, for your uh, hard work at this and you and Commissioner Moore. I want to also thank him because Absolutely. you guys seem to work real, real well as a team in implementing this, uh, this uh, new technology. Uh, question, though, and I think I heard you said that uh, it basically insurance, you, I mean, you can find out anything about a vehicle just pulling up uh, on this system. Will law enforcement have uh, access to this? Yes, I, yes. Okay. So with that being said, uh, the possibility of us individuals having to have insurance cards in their vehicle with, I mean, can you see that possibly going away since, I mean, when you, if someone's pulled over, the, one of the first things they check is. If they're carrying a, a valid. Yeah, I mean, they always ask for either insurance, insurance card mm -hmm. and your license. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking if uh, the insurance card, I mean, if, you, if they're pulling that up before they even go up to see the person, well, I would that's probably one less thing to. And I, I'm not asking you if mm -hmm. y that will happen. I'm saying, but the technology does allow that. That is correct. Thank you. It would be the will of the Department of Public Safety and the General right. Assembly should right. they wish to move away from sure. having it carried in the vehicle. Uh, but the functionality will exist for public yeah. safety to query the uh, whether insurance is uh, valid. valid on that motor vehicle. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Track Chairman. Track. Uh, thank you, Commissioner, um, for for the update and the presentation. The question I have is there there is a slide that had county tag offices on there, color coded um, to show connectivity and equipment, equipment only and connectivity. Can you help me with? Um, looks like most of them have both connectivity and equipment, but can you walk through what that means? Are they all supposed to get there, or is this the way it's going to be when it's fully implemented? That is a snapshot in time of what the each county had for connectivity and equipment as of January 18th, I believe it was. Uh, the Before May 27th, all of the state will be in a green <coughs> position. The, it's just to indicate the journey that we have taken to make sure that every county has the proper circuitry to be able to operate this new technology, as well as the proper hardware to be able to run a web-based system. 
uh, as what is currently in these tag offices is a green screen uh, mainframe based system which certainly wouldn't run a 21st century uh, web-based tech piece of software. So we're making sure that the hardware they have, the computers, are sufficient to be able to have this new system installed. Number 16, Chairman Powell. Commissioner, when this system goes online, one of the, one of the issues that we've had in the Hitherlands, and that's dealing with the uh, auto rebuilders. Mm -hmm. When this system goes online and adds that process for the rebuilders, I mean, it's pretty well set in stone, but will that, does this mean that once they do the inspection to that vehicle, that then they can take this, all their paperwork to be processed at the local, ta uh, at the local level at the tax commissioner's office? Would it be processed through this? George, I knew I was gonna have to phone a friend. I see them heads, <laughs> are, sh I see them heads are shaking and they ain't gonna solve it problem. I, I, but I think it, if Brent, please come on up, could give an answer on how those could be processed in such a way that they would be in the system for query. Brent, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, currently, the way it, it, it is, it's not going to change. The system itself um, is, is modernized, but the process of how they're going to transact is not going to necessarily change. Um, could we look at that in the future as far as training tag offices? That's something for my director um, and the commissioner, of course. But currently, the process in and itself is not going to change. So when they, still, when they do it, the data would come into our database. It would electronically be submitted to us. However, the actual, because the counties that are trained on processing rebuilt, it's only handled by MVD at the present moment. Let me be sure I understand. Be sure, sure we got, we're on the same page. Absolutely. You know, you're familiar with the processing sure. of rebuilt vehicles. Yes, sir. Titles. So when uh, the business people out there and when they're doing the rebuilding on these vehicles and they go through all of the, the business of providing the affidavits and bills Correct. of sale and they do the inspection for the roadworthiness of the vehicle, the last process is to take the paperwork. Correct. To the used to be the gratis but you know and it's but the reason i ask that question is that's probably one of the areas right now that suffers the longest downtime of getting those titles back to these business people and yes is there any way do we foresee any way that this is going to be picked up to, to get them back where they can sell those vehicles I think Brent has indicated that we currently aren't programming the drive system to provide that functionality, but should that be <coughs> the, the will of the General Assembly for us to go in that direction, we'd be happy to do some estimation of what it would take for that programming and, and be able to report back to you and make those decisions. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Number 11, Representative McLean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you to uh, Madam Commissioner for all the hard work as well. I guess my questions are several, but I hope Mr. Chairman you'll just give me that time. Uh, so will all law enforcement have the, the capacity to, to, to go into their system to, to pull up the new information? I mean, when I say all, I mean, I know that we're having problems with 28 counties, and I just want to make sure that the law enforcement have the equipment or the capacity to, to do that. They currently do, and, and thank you for that question, Representative. The law enforcement currently has the ability to query our current system, and that will not change. All law enforcement will be able to query to learn what the details are of a vehicle that they are interacting with, and, and that will not change. That will still be there. So they, they don't need to buy any additional equipment, anything else to, to, to log in? Not for law enforcement. It will just merely be a different login to a new system to have that access to that information. Madam Chairman, just, you know, one more. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Just uh, well, on the uh, other, um, the software and hardware, I mean, if, for instance, if something goes down, uh, what, you know, Chairman Powell was saying was if something goes down, you got backup paper or, or what, you know, what's the deal if something happens? That Thank you for that question as well. The system is designed with a full backup. It's fully redundant. So not only will we have an operating platform, but we will have a fully functional uh, backup system that should the main system have any 
glitches, if you will, will pivot over to the backup system. Paper will still be scanned and retained I in electronic format, so, and that will always be accessible from the system, but we will not have as much paper that is necessary to perform the services for our taxpayers. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. Senator McGill, you, you ready? Uh, so May? We're, we're looking forward to May 27th, uh, it, when many will be enjoying a Memorial Day holiday. Uh, the Department of Revenue will be behind the scenes making sure that uh, on May 28th, when the counties open their tag offices, we will be full speed ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. I got one question on, on the uh, equipment that the local governments had to buy. At one time, it was money was going to be provided, and then, then it wasn't. How, did the state provide any money for the, the local tag offices to upgrade their equipment? The state provided funding in the FY18 budget for the connectivity, the for circuitry that is being implemented through partnership with Je Georgia Technology Authority. But, but Hardware is a expense to the local government Lo local government mm -hmm. okay and the local government they get uh, fees on renewal from tags and fees that is correct year. there are revenue streams that uh, they would have at their disposal to utilize to invest in the equipment the department is making sure that all counties will have the equipment they need and should a necessity occur we'll f uh, have the opportunity to offer uh, a rent or a, a lease arrangement with the county to make sure they have the right equipment in place do you know if the fees they collect on renewal and sell selling the tags do, are they made whole or are they losing money by doing this or do you have any idea mr chairman i couldn't answer that question and i'm, I'm sure it may uh, deviate county to county so, anyway, that's my only question uh, th thank you again for uh, your presentation and well, very informative and appreciate what you do. We thank you very much and we look forward to serving any of the questions going forward as the committee continues to deliberate over the session. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we will uh, be open for any public comment, anybody that signed up. Uh, not, not seeing any way, we're we'll going to our closing comments. Uh, our normal meeting time will be on Tuesday morning at eight o'clock. We, we have room 515. Uh, reserved every, every Tuesday. Uh, we'll probably be announcing subcommittee meetings probably be on, on Thursdays. Uh, we've got two bills right now that uh, have been assigned to our, our committee so far, Bill House Bill 56 and House Bill 66. So uh, they, they will be uh, at our next uh, subcommittee meeting. Uh, I think both of those are dealing with tags. Uh, I, I believe it'll be in the uh, tags and titles subcommittee. So uh, be looking for a uh, memo on that. I will also, I dropped the ball, I'll make sure our room has air conditioning next week. <laughs> we, we will not sit in here and sweat. I, I, I think I'm in the Ways and Means room. <laughs> but anyway, I appreciate everybody uh, coming. And if there's nothing else, uh, we are adjourned. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody, everybody would leave their folders on their desk. Thank you all.